Good morning. So in this video, we are going to understand about Bayes' theorem. What is Bayes' theorem? Okay. So Bayes' theorem is a function through which uh, you will. It's an inverse function. Bayes' theorem is a sort of inverse function. But before knowing Bayes' theorem, you need to know about probability. You need to know about rule of sum and rule of product. So let's understand about it now. Let's understand about the rule of sum. When two events are mutually exclusive, which means they are not going to occur in the same time. Let's say I toss a coin, there's a head and there's a scale. So if the coin is tossed, it won't be head and scale together. It can be only be one event. So these are examples of mutually exclusive. So mutually exclusive, which means they are not, both the conditions won't occur in the same time. Okay, so then what you do is you can add it up like n plus m when they are mutually exclusive. So for, let me show you an example of it. So for example, you go to a movie and you have five action movie, seven comedy movie and 16 drama. So if I say, can you uh, ask me how many choices I got? Then the answer is 28. Now, how, is, how did I get this answer? It's just adding five action movies, seven comedy movie and 16 dramas. So that's total comes to 28. And remember, these are mutually exclusive. So that's why you could implement the rule, the rule of sum. Next is, we will understand something called the rule of product. The rule of product. This is called the rule of product. And what happens in rule of product is, you multiply one event with the second event. Uh, the number of ways to do A and B is N into A into N into B. But for that, these events need to be independent of each other. They can't be dependent on each other. So let me show you an example where you are implementing rule of product. This is an example where you are implementing the rule of product. For example, there are six daily newspapers and four weekly magazines, okay, and uh, in Chicago. Now, if James wants to subscribe to exactly one daily newspaper and one weekly magazine, how many different choices does he have? So the answer is six multiplied by four, that is equal to 24. Now, one more thing is these events, these events are independent of each other. So that's why you could implement this rule called the rule of product. The next important rule to understand is the rule of total probability. Now, what it does mean, what it does is, uh, suppose um, the, uh, you break up the events with three parts and then you combine it together to find the law of, that, and that is called the law of total probability. So let me just show you an example where you are implementing the law of total probability. Now, for example, uh, you can observe here that back one has got 75 red balls and 25 blue marbles. Okay, and uh, back two has got 60 red balls and 40 blue marbles. Back three has got 45 red marbles and blue marbles. Now, if I want to find the total chance of an event or total probability, okay, so of how do I find it? Of red ball being picked up how do i find it so what i do is first is i will break up i'll try to find the probability of red ball in back one probability of red ball in back two and probability of red ball in back three and you can observe 0.75 is the answer for the first one 0.60 and 0.45 is the answer for the next one respectively and then you implement the law of probability now see since there are three bags here there are a total of three bags here. Bag one is one by three. So what is the probability of bag two is again one by three. And bag three is again one by three. See, since there are three bags, it's one by three. If there were four bags, it would have been one by four. So now to implement the law of uh, total probability, first is you will multiply probability of red bag by ball one, multiply by probability of B1, that is, probability of bag 1 okay so now that is 0 0.075 multiplied by 1 by 3 plus 
probability of red by B2 that is 0.60 multiplied by 1 by 3 plus 0.45 multiplied by 1 by 3 and that is the total probability of red and this is the sometimes in Bayes theorem. Now let's implement Bayes theorem using probability tables. Now there is a casino machine. If you go to a casino and there are three machines, machine M1, machine M2 and M3. 90% of the money is taken and 10% of the money is given out. Okay. 90% of the money of the customer's money is taken by the machine. Okay. And 10% is given out. That's the winner of the jackpot gets it. Now among the money taken, 60% is taken from machine M1, 25% is taken by machine M2 and 15% by M3. So you know the relationship. Let's say that that 60% is taken from machine M1, 25% from M2 and 15% from M3 and jackpot. 40% is released from machine M1, 30 from M2 and 30% from M3. So what we do is we put this information as conditional probability. So now what we need to know is how much how much is taken from machine M1 and how much is taken from machine M2 and how much is taken from M3. So if you observe, we don't have this information. We only have the information that 60% is taken from M1. That is this one, this particular part. 60% is taken from M1. Okay, 60% is taken from M1. So uh, how much uh, M1 has taken 60 percentage, and uh, M2 has taken 0.25 percentage, and M3 has taken 0.15 percentage. Now, what we want is reverse. So what we want is uh, how much is taken by M1, how much is taken by M2, and how much is taken by M3 total. How much total is taken? So this is where we are going to implement a base function on probability tables. Now you observe your probability of M1 by J, that is the probability of M1 by J is 0.4. That is uh, J is a jackpot and uh, you can understand that machine 1, from machine 1 you get 0.4 as the jackpot. Now what we will do is, this is the probability of taken is 0.9 and probability of jackpot is 0.1 okay so what we do is we put this all in a probability table you can observe here this is a probability table and you can observe here 0.6 multiplied by 0.9 because 0.9 comes from this following information 0.9 is coming from here 0.6 is coming from here 0.9 is the probability of uh, taking taken is probability 0.9 and probability of jackpot is 0.1 so if you see here i multiplied 0 0.1 0 0.4 multiplied by 0 0.1 0 0.03 multiplied by 0 0.1 because that's the jackpot that's the probability for jackpot and uh, below is the total mentioned so from once when this is ready once when you look at it you can immediately know that uh, jackpot, the most, uh, the machine which has, where I can win the most jackpot is on machine number M3 because it's 0 0.03 while 0 0.004, M1 is only 0 0.004. So from this what happens is you are able to know which machine gives you better payout and which machine is more expensive, let's say 0.54. Uh, M1 is taking more money from the customer while M2 least and M3 the least. So M3 is the machine which I would like to sell. So this is an example where we have used the base function. And this is again a formula for the base function. See for example, uh, probability of taken by M1. Now if I want to find it, what I have done is probability of taken intersect M1 by probability of M1 that is equal to 0 0.54 by 0 0.58 into 0 0.931 okay probability of taken by m2 is 0 0.882 and probability of taken by m3 is 0.818 so from this we can know that the taking feature of the casino machine 
of probab uh, machine m1 is the most costliest this is an example of conditional probability uh, this is how uh, we have used uh, sorry base function to find the relationship of taken and m1 so uh, m1 uh, m1 has uh, from M from M1 we have taken 0.931 percentage and similarly for jackpot this is how we have implemented the base function and this is how the base formula looks like probability of A and B is equal to probability of B over A multiplied by probability of A divided by probability of B that is what is called the base function so you just saw an example how we have implemented a probability table and from the probability table we implemented uh, the base formula we already knew what is how much uh, how much uh, uh, how much is taken by m1 so that uh, comes from the probability table let's say 0.54 and you divide it by the marginal total that is 0.58 and then you get 0.931 so this is just one simple example of base function and uh, that's it for now